It's been widely accepted in many industry sectors, but the pharmaceutical sector has been slow on the uptake of continuous manufacturing. What are your thoughts on, on why that is? Yeah, there's a range of reasons, but I'll pick two. One is the volume. So the sectors you've mentioned are very high volume and they lend themselves to continuous manufacturing, particularly um, you know, oil and gas. You know, in fact, it's the opposite where there's the small elements of batch processing in, in oil and gas. And the second aspect is the regulatory environment. So some of the regulatory burden for installing uh, new technology you know, is obviously higher in pharma than it is elsewhere. But the you know, fundamental reason also is uh, you know, commercial reasons. Cool. So there has never really been the driver you know, in the past. But as you look forward, you know, lower volume products, um, then you know, higher potency materials, um, distributed drug product manufacture, these are reasons why the pharma industry is um, starting to go to continuous. Okay. In comparison to traditional batch manufacturing, continuous offers many advantages. What would you say the main ones are? One is consistency, um, so reducing variability. So there's many continuous processes when run efficiently have much lower variability and better products. So perhaps if you've got an inhaler, you're looking for a narrower size distribution of material or a smaller size, so that's better products. And what's really exciting in some of our work is looking at being able to produce new materials. Okay. So with different um, benefits to the patient or different ways of manufacturing. So we, our work basically falls into the, the three categories. How would you say innovation through digitalization is, is helping bring continuous manufacturing onwards? So specifically in the in drug product area, there's um, many processes which are you know, controlled very tightly by uh, very good use of automation and uh, moving towards real-time release of products which can reduce inventory. Sure. We also see at the reaction side, you know, very uh, hazardous reactions, um, you know, can taken for granted that these can be, um, can be controlled. Okay. In the lab environment, lots of work on you know, data mining. You know, as I mentioned, artificial intelligence, but ways of looking at all the data that's generated um, and developing uh, better processes more quickly. What are the barriers you feel are, are still preventing further growth for continuous manufacturing? Yeah, first thing to say, I'm passionate about continuous manufacturing, um, but there's various er areas of processing where batch processing you know, is appropriate sure. and will remain appropriate. Some of the arguments, um, in ter and we've studied this, um, through our colleagues at the Institute for Manufacturing at Cambridge against introducing continuous manufacturing regulatory. Um, again, we found the regulatory environment and the FDA and others being very supportive. Um, so the skills that the um, you know, process development um, professionals and process operators of the future are, are perhaps different to, to today. So how we influence that is a key thing. Um, and the other thing is probably human nature risk and just in terms of a step you know, into the unknown and, be, and having processes and procedures that are um, able to be um, adopted in a continuous environment. Thanks very much, Craig. It's been great talking with you. You've provided me with real insight in how continuous manufacturing has helped drive the medicine supply chain of the future. Thanks, Alan.